Imagine you're an astronaut. You launch with a rocket and off you go to the International Space Station. Then you land on it and suddenly you float. But why? Mostly we will say, but it's because you're gravity and you're in space and in space you just float. Or maybe because on planets there's gravity that pulls you on the planet, but in space there isn't. Actually, no, it's not like that. When you launch with the rocket to the ISS, you begin to start moving faster than Earth spins. And when you land on the ISS, it's actually very fast, like 28,000 kilometers per hour fast. Or for you Americans, 17.5 thousand miles per hour. With this speed, you can travel around whole Earth in just 90 minutes. But what does the speed of the ISS have to do with zero gravity? Because zero gravity just exists, no? No, actually, zero gravity isn't in the space vacuum as many people believe. Just because when you're traveling that fast with the ISS, something else happens called freefall. What's freefall? Freefall, as for the word, is basically falling freely from the sky. It's like you jumping off of a plane, with a parachute I hope. Well, not exactly like that. The International Space Station is constantly freefalling towards Earth. So why on Earth doesn't it just fall on it then? How does it constantly spin around? The answer is speed. The ISS moves so fast at the right speed that the curve of that speed matches the curve of Earth. Technically, it's still falling on the Earth, but because it's so fast, it's always gonna miss the Earth as seen on this picture. As for you physics nerds, this logic was actually figured out by this well-known man, Newton. He figured this out with his cannon. If you shoot the bullet with the cannon just at the right speed or velocity, the bullet will start constantly spinning around, in this case Earth. Here are the formulas for this example. The same logic is applied to the ISS. So because the ISS is moving with the right high velocity, it will constantly be falling towards the Earth but be basically missing it. Let's imagine another simple example of the ISS. You spin a ball on a string. You spin a ball with a certain speed or velocity and with force, it's gonna keep spinning around your hand. In real life, your hand giving that force to the ball is the gravitational pull. The hand itself is the Earth. Because if you didn't realize, the Earth gives gravitational pull. This speed has to be perfectly calculated. If our ball or the space station was moving slower, it would not reach the curve of the Earth or your hands in time and thus touch them. Because the ball moves with just the right velocity, it will keep missing your hands. However, farther from the Earth that the specific object is, the slower it can move and vice versa. Because more far from Earth you go, the weaker the gravitational pull is. Compare it to the string. The longer the string is, less force you need to spin the ball, and the ball can move slower. This can happen the opposite way as well. The International Space Station, however, isn't that far from the Earth's atmosphere, and that means that it's not in the total vacuum. There's still some air that drags it and decelerates it. That causes the ISS to lose around 0.1 miles per hour each day. To compensate for this, each month the ISS needs to use the thrusters to regain the lost altitude. Does this all make sense? Cool, but how does this affect the zero gravity? If you go skydiving, do you feel how heavy you are? Or when you're on the roller coaster or in a theme park on those freefall machines, do you feel gravity pulling you down? No, and the same happens with the ISS. The astronauts don't feel gravity or they float because they're constantly free falling just like you would with skydiving, except that they're missing the Earth because of the centripetal force. So, the astronauts don't float just because they're in space, but because they're experiencing the same force you would in the theme park, except that it never ends. This took for ages. 